way that that defense played yesterday, the first three drives, I was petrified. Not going to lie. But the way that they adjusted, and Dan Quinn and Micah Parsons and Brad Sham, my gosh, you are 100% right. I've never been more dumbass wrong in my life than with Micah Parsons. I'm in love with that man. Funny you said that. I was thinking the same I'm thing. I'm in love I was like, with him. Wow, Sham really had that up perfectly said I love on you. draft night. I love you, Walchuk Micah. Walchuk was complaining about the Parsons pick. Gosh, he's he says, incredible. At Zach Walchuk, you could not be more dumbass wrong. And I was, that was. That was flashing into my brain throughout the game as well. I'm, I'm glad that you said that because it's like, wow, this Parsons pick is just, I mean, it's its such a home run pick. He's such an absolute animal. Watching him bend the corner and then Mahomes scooting off to his left thing. Oh, no, I got some time. I'm going to keep my eyes down. Field. Okay. Mahomes is getting ready to fling with his wrist 70 yards to Tyreek Hill. So, I got all the time in the world. And then here comes this freaking avalanche of monster. Yes. That's like the fastest thing you've ever seen. And it's, nope, ball's mine. Let's go party. And when he bends the corner, did he not give you, was that not shades of young DeMarcus? Young DeMarcus Ware. Ware right there? Yeah. And not to mention, he ties and then surpasses the rookie sack record all in the same game. But my goodness, uh, yeah, Micah Parsons was an animal. And the fact that defensively, you end up having five consecutive stops, and then you got two massive turnovers in that game, which is what you missed in the Denver game. You needed those big plays. You needed that who's going to make a play to give us some life, to give you that jolt of energy to put you in a situation to come back and win it. Mikey gave you one. Then he had the tip drill that ends up being intercepted. So your defense did everything you could have asked for, and they don't have their two best defensive linemen. And Randy Gregory and Demarcus Lawrence, they're both going to come back, hopefully, for the Saints game. Mike McCarthy just at about 4 o'clock today on the G-Bag Nation with his presser. Demarcus Lawrence chomping at the bit. We saw him yesterday on the sidelines, coaching it up, hyping him up. He's chomping at the bit to come out and play, right? He's about to come off the designated to return IR list, and then he's going to be ready to go. So, you know, you're about to get this defense hopefully at full force. And again, I mean, it is a fingers crossed situation because the way this Cowboys season has gone is you get one player back, something else happens. But, man... It does seem as though if you can just kind of weather this storm of injuries, you're looking like you're going to be a healthy football team for the stretch run. And offensively, Dak Prescott needs to play better, right? We are now holding him to MVP top five quarterback in the league status. And you'd like to see him perform better. I mean, they're, they're, I'm absolutely not going to defend Dak. He needs to play better, 100%. But you can point throughout the rest of the NFL – Tom Brady the last couple of weeks without Antonio Brown and Rob Gronkowski. I mean, name the quarterback. If you're not going to have your starting tackle in Tyron Smith, if you're not going to have your best wide receiver in Amari Cooper, and then your next best playmaker goes down in C.D. Lamb, it's going to be difficult for you. And even when Dak made a great throw, he wasn't exactly aided by his receivers. We saw the drops by Cedric Wilson and Noah Brown in that game, and the officiating didn't help either. I mean, I don't know. I've never seen in my life a, a an officiating crew go back after the fact and tack on a flag upon review inside the stadium. I mean, th- you're not allowed to do that. But somehow, some way, this officiating crew decides, I'm John Hussey. We're going to allow this to happen. I am 100% with you. Dak, was, Dak did not look great yesterday. There's, there's no way around it. You don't score nine points in a game and come away thinking, damn, I got me a quarterback. Um but I, I do feel like um, you when, when, when you don't have all those guys, as you mentioned, you're on the road in an extremely tough environment. And that pass rush was, was pretty relentless. And so I'm excited to once we start once we start getting into, and I know this is a short week, so it's it's immediately you're looking back and then boom, it's on to the Raiders kind of deal. But I really want to go back and see or somebody smarter than me and pick apart these sacks and these pressures and just say, you know, because we've gotten to a place now in sports or in football where everybody's saying, oh, quarterback sacks or sacks on the quarterback. That's a quarterback stat. Sacks are a quarterback stat. They're not, a, they're, people are looking at it like it's not as much on the offensive line and it's more on the quarterback. And I'm, I'm hard pressed because I'm, I'm all in on the new age football stuff and the way we look at things. And I love it. And I think it's fun. The sacks or a quarterback stat to me are 
it's a tough thing to just jump all the way into. I think you can break down on a on you look at two different sacks from two different games, and one might be on the quarterback and one might not be. I, I don't really know, but I'm curious to see. Okay, how, how much of this was on the on on Dak himself, and how much it was it just the offensive line getting beat? And I can tell you, when I saw one on one Zach Barton get clubbed by Chris Jones, I'm going, okay, this is just this is. This is just a different animal that we're dealing with. Lael Collins looked awful. I mean, there's a point where Lael Collins, oh, Lael Collins is completely horrible. turned around looking yep. at Dak, kind of with the shoulder shrug, like, uh, good luck, bro, as one of these Chiefs defenders is screaming down his neck. Yeah, Terrence Steele decides, uh, I'm I just I'm not going to go with the snap of the football at uh, at one point. I mean, there's and what we talked about this leading into the game, the, the crowd noise, and how if, if Tyron Smith plays – I feel that much more better about this in terms of, all right, now you have a veteran on the left side that can handle that type of pressure on the road in a loud environment. Well, I mean, it's a tough situation for Conor McGovern making his first start uh, next to a Terrence Steele and two young guys on that side. And and Zach Martin wasn't going to make excuses for that. I appreciate it. But Chris Jones was an absolute monster. And the 817 texting in, well, Daniel Jones scored a touchdown. Dan- J- Jalen Hurd scored a touchdown. Jordan Love scored a touchdown. And Tyler Heineke all scored touchdowns against the Chiefs defense. Chiefs defense now is playing Chris Jones where he should be playing. And that defense the last three weeks has completely resurrected itself. And Jordan Love did score one bleeping touchdown, and they put up seven points. At least Dak put up nine. Like, I'm not trying to make it, uh, defend Dak here. He had a bad game. But not all things are created equal. I mean, I don't, I, I don't think that that should all be reasons like, oh my gosh, like are those quarterbacks better than Dak Prescott? Eight one seven, going to take any of those guys over Dak? Because you're a schmuck if your answer would be yes there. But two sacks by Connor McGovern, one sack allowed by Lyle Collins, and then that sack from Zach Martin. Chris Jones was just unblockable yesterday. Well, Next Gen says that the Chiefs' pass rush uh, dominated the Cowboys' O line. They generated five sacks on non blitzes. So it's like, hey, we're just rushing four at you. This is like pretty elementary stuff. You guys got five blockers. We got four rushers. We're not going to blitz you. And they came away tied for the most sacks in a single game this season when it comes to sacks on non-blitzes. So, I mean, to me, that tells me, like, man, your offensive line was getting worked. Uh, but also it could be, hey, your quarterback was hanging on to the ball for forever. And I, I think it really was a know. good blend of the two. Yeah. There, there certainly were some times where I'm thinking, Dak, you need to get rid of the football. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but then, then there were some times like, where it's like, yeah. If I was Dak. I don't know what I would have done. What, I, don't know, just... I don't know what he's supposed to do there either, certainly. One thing that, I did, that did irritate me throughout the game, Tony Pollard was their best offensive weapon. And there was no excuse for him to have just nine touches yesterday. I mean, as Bobby Bell tweeted out, I believe he had nine touches for 70 yards from scrimmage. Yeah, every Tony, time every time he touched the ball. Tony Pollard needed to be utilized way more, even if it was lined up as a wide receiver at times, with, with all the injuries you had at wide receiver. Just find a way to get Tony Pollard the ball in space. Mm-hmm. And and they, they missed out on those opportunities. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to only get two receptions um, on a day, where, especially on a day where, hey, you don't have Amari. Hey, for most of the game, you're not going to have C.D. Lamb. Uh, okay, we're still kind of getting Michael Gallup back into the thick of things. Like, you don't have a a stud receiver. And, and then on the same day where Zeke's getting the ball six times through the air, and those plays were relatively successful, but, like, Tony Pollard, two catches for 20 yards. Tony Pollard, seven carries for 50 yards, averaging seven yards a pop. And, and when it comes to play design, there wasn't much that was like, oh, wow, Kellen's in his bag right now. But there was one uh, pretty early in the game, I think, when they flip it out to Pollard and he does like a fake reverse. Yeah, which was amazing. It was the best boom, play of the game. It's off. Yeah, it's like that's that's cool. I'd like to dial up some more things for Pollard. He's your, I don't even want to call him a gadget guy because you can just turn around and hand him the ball too and he'll go get you seven or eight yards pretty much with ease. Uh, like the dude is a guy you want to get the ball in his hands more. And I understand when you have your full litany, uh, you know, your full cast of characters, hey, there wasn't enough to go around to get Pollard the ball 13 times. Okay. But on a day like yesterday, when you don't have it and you're, th- you're, force, you're force feeding Noah Bleep and Brown and crap like that, I'm like, okay, uh, like, what are we doing? Let's go ahead and, I mean, Dalton Schultz has got, is your, lead, is your, is your team leader in receptions. 
why can't Pollard get a little bit more there? I, I think that is I think that's a fair complaint. And maybe they know things more behind the scenes than we do of like, hey, there's only so much you can put on this guy's plate, but it's like, man, it seems like every time you turn around, Pollard balls in Pollard's hand, something good happens. For Nine's, the most part. And a hundred percent. And and there was no I mean, that that's something that irritated me. Uh two one four, where's coaching and play calling come into play on the loss yesterday? There was no reason not to take a timeout after the at the end of the first half. Yeah. You get the Parsons fumble, you get that first down. They should have called the timeout. Instead, now you've milked the clock down to what was it, seventeen seconds or something, and then Dak throws the fade to C D that gets intercepted. I mean, I think everybody that has watched enough football in their lives or even just plays Madden knows, yeah, probably take it take a timeout, settle things down. And one, you're maximizing the amount of plays that you have now to try and score. Uh, Mike McCarthy chose not to take a timeout. And yes, I mean, I do think you could question. I mean, there was a lack of aggressiveness. But I also think all of this comes into play with you're on the road. You don't have your starting left tackle. You don't have your top two wide receivers, right? I mean, 972, I 100% hear your point. In order to be, to, to be, I think, a, a dominant team in the league is what they're trying to say. You have to beat good teams like Kansas City and Tampa Bay, and all he hears is us making excuses. I just think it, it's very hard to get completely up in arms and ticked off about a team that went on the road. And the defense, which has been the, the thing that you've been most concerned about, puts up an incredible performance. You lose by 10, and offensively, you didn't have a future Hall of Fame tackle. You didn't have your best receiver your second best receiver gets hurt at halftime. There comes a point where you, you've just lost too much. And would you like to see Dak overcome that? Yes. But there's, I don't know that there really has been a quarterback that's been over to, been able to overcome that all year, period, when he's been down those amount of weapons. Brady hasn't been able to do it without Brown and Gronk the last two weeks they've lost. You know, I, I think it, it, those kind of quarterbacks don't really – it's not part of the NFL anymore. It's too much to ask on the road against a good football team in Kansas City to do that. So I'm not. If, if the Cowboys are healthy, I think they beat the Chiefs, and I'm not going to overreact to a loss like that. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm not overreacting to this one either. I feel. I feel pretty good about the way things unfolded. You just mentioned the litany of guys that you had out of that game on the road, tough environment against a really, really good team. I mean, one of the backbones of this Cowboys team this year that has been surprising and welcoming and exciting and all these different things is their ability to overcome injuries or suspensions or whatever it is. And they've had, they've had some serious ones um, on both sides of the ball. And for the most part this year, they've been able to overcome it. But at some point, the list becomes a little bit too long. The players are a little bit too good. It's not only the quantity of the people on the list, but it's the quality as well. Exactly. And then it's on the road, tough environment against a team that's too good to beat that way. And the Chiefs have gotten their swagger back right at the worst time for the Cowboys because they got it back on Sunday night. Now they're up and they're and they're dancing and they're doing all these different things. Uh, the good news is you don't see them again until the Super Bowl. But I would feel great about that. That would be an indoors neutral field game. In in Los Angeles, where I would imagine there'd actually be more Cowboys fans than anything, it, I, I don't I don't I'm not scared of this team. I'm not. I I'm feel not I feel pretty good about it. I feel pretty good about it if you if you had to see him again. The way that defense played, man, I'm gonna bust out the numbers on you a little bit later on in the show. But oh my gosh, the defense was outstanding. Oh, uh, it was and without their two best pass rushers. It's a massive silver lining the way that the defense was able to perform yesterday. And when you don't have your two best pass rushers, what that forces you to have is also not your best linebacker because yep. now he's having to pass rush, and he was dominant in that way. But, I mean, Vander Esch, one tackle. He had one more tackle than you and me yesterday, Walchuk.